my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be breaking down the Luis Enrique triple three one system in the game FC24. If you can, let me know down below how you found the system. Me personally, I absolutely love it. Of course, they used it against Strasbourg, and I'm pretty damn sure that this was the system that they used versus the likes of Newcastle. So there are going to be a few tweaks here and there, but a fantastic system nonetheless. Let's get into introducing the players. We've got Ramos, Mbappe, Bacalo, as well as Dembele as our forwards. Then we've got Ruiz, Vitina, as well as Soler in the midfield, a very technical midfield, not, not a lot of bite because you need more technicality in there. We've got Hernandez, Marquinhos, and Skriniar as our defenders. And in between the sticks, we've got Donnarumma. On the bench, we've got Colin Moani, Lee Kangin, Zahir Emery, Ugarte, Navas, Mukiele, and then Kempembe. Then in the reserves, we've got players like Hakimi, Asensio, Mendes, Pereira, and a few other players I don't care to mention. Now, of course, with this formation, you have to create because it doesn't actually exist in the game. And I just wanted to show you the exact lineup I went with, or the exact formation I selected and then altered from there. So I selected the 343 diamond, which looks like this. And then I essentially went and made it into this magnificent masterpiece that you see right here. So basically one goalkeeper, three center backs, one DM, two central midfielders, one center forward, two wingers, and then one striker. So for the tactics going forward, I went ahead and selected wing play for the tactical vision as I think it best suits what this team tried to do against Strasbourg as well as what they tried to do versus the likes of uh, Newcastle United. So they would work the ball into those wider areas, whether, whether it was with the likes of Mbappe or a winger or potentially a midfielder. Of course, with the specific sets of instructions, you will see that in those wider areas, you have a lot of help um, and you try and overload those wider regions of the pitch. And then trying to attack the opposition at a, at a specific angle and then work the ball either into the box or potentially fire and crosses for the other forwards in the attacking third. Now, as for the defensive style and the structure of it, the pressure on heavy touch best suits what this team is trying to do. Of course, it's a very narrow, compact system. You don't really want them playing through the lines or anything of that sort. And with the, the pressure on heavy touch, you do try and wait and you can definitely press, yes, but you do try and wait for the opposition to make that mistake. And then with your four forwards, you can look to close down and cut out potential passes and passing angles. Um, and then look to try and swing the, the, the game around and potentially attack on the opposition. As for the team width, however, like I said, it's a naturally compact, narrow system in the middle. You only have two wider players in this system going forward. So you do want to try and flare that out just ever so slightly. And by doing that, team width needs to be set to 60, which does help a fair amount. It does allow your wider center backs, your, your left and your right sided center backs to drift into those um, wider channels to try and prevent crosses from being fired into the box. As for the team depth, however, it is set to 85. Now this system, I will say, you should use the system against the, the lesser teams. I'm not going to mention the exact teams, but against the lesser teams. Teams that you know you can pin in their own half and throw relentless attacks at them more times now. Of course, you have four forwards on the field. You've got a very technical midfield that can supply that forward line with the needed passes to get the best out of them. Those in-behind crosses or those in-behind passes over the top. You want them consistently attacking. And with a, a, a depth set to this high, you want your center backs to be as involved and as hyper field as possible, rotating position back into the forwards, making sure that the attacks are relentless. And speaking of the attacks and the offensive side of things, the builder player is set to a slow build up and the chance creation is set to position. Now, with Luis Enrique, it goes without saying it's like a, a staple in his tactical setup. He wants to maintain the ball. I think PSG, I mean, they, they do play in the French League, this and the other, but even in the Champions League, they, they maintain one of the highest possession stats in the world or in Europe, I should say. So they will always look to try and look after the ball. You need to be very patient with it. Of course, you will have your runners in behind trying to exploit the line with this, the specific sets of instructions for the likes of Mbappe, Ruiz, um, Ramos, of course, Colin Moani, Dembele. They will make those occasional runs in behind looking to try and, you know, create a fast break or something like that. So you can have that, of course, but more times than not, you will look to build out from the back with the goalkeeper having the center back show for the ball and then progressing the ball high up the field. You will look to try and, you know, have those intricate passes being played in and around the final third. So be patient with it. And those gaps will definitely show, especially if you are going to overload the opposition. And you can do that with the width on this team going forward. Of course, you want to try and fit those forwards into one straight line going forward. Have the likes of Mbappe playing close to the likes of Ramos or Kota Mwani or so on. Um, but more importantly, because you are 
trying to work that ball into those wider areas, you need to try and have a width set to 80, and that does create a bit more space between the lines. It does generate a bit more space for your midfield, and it does create more space for your attackers to try and get into. Now, as for the players in the box, however, I've gone with a very high eight, um, and that essentially does overload and creates a nice um, attacking outlet for you when trying to whip those balls into, into the box. You have four forwards, you need to try and supply those forwards with um, some good accurate passes, whether it's a cutback, whether it's a cross, um, as well as sometimes, occasionally, one of the wider midfielders, one of the central midfielders, I should say, um, they will look to advance into the final third. Now, as for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to fall. So, starting off with the instructions for the goalkeeper, of course, Donnarumma, he's set to come for crosses and have a balanced approach for saving from outside of the box. More times than not, and this is to try and replicate his personality and his goalkeeping ideology, where he won't make that run and try and win the ball in the in just outside the area. He will look to try and stay on his line and make the save. Of course, he is very tall, so you do back him more times than not, but he also can be hyper exposed with this high line so just be a bit wary about that but in terms of him being able to catch crosses and be very aggressive when it comes for those crosses he's going to claim them he's going to be very good in the air uh, making sure that he gets to the ball before any other opposition attacker moving slightly high up the field though, we've got marquinhos and screening are there since their base set of instructions whereas the likes of um and he said theo hernandez no his brother lucas hernandez he will make those overlapping runs we do see that he does get a bit more involved in the attacking play he can't even get as high as whipping in those crosses, supplying the forwards, all four of them at times, with a dangerous ball into the attacking third. So you do want him to advance slightly higher up the field in certain moments. And speaking of advancing up the field, we'll start off with Ruiz, the base of this midfield. He is your DM, of course. He is set to cut passing lanes, and then for his attacking support, I've set it to balance. You don't really want him just hanging back. It's a very fluid um, three in the midfield. All of them can definitely be box-to-box -box players, and that's what you're trying to replicate with this Ruiz role. Um, interceptions are set to normal as well as being the deep line playmaker of course collecting the ball off of Marquinhos who isn't the best at doing it he can definitely do it but he's not the best at doing so as well as collecting the, collecting the ball off of the likes of Donnarumma showing for the ball a bit more and then building and progressing the ball higher up the field and then of course for his defensive position you want him to be able to cover the wing either starting into that right back area or that left back area if needed especially with the builder player going forward and then on either side of Ruiz we have got two box-to-box -box players Soler and Vettina both of them are set to the same set of instructions. So starting off with the attacking support, both of them are set to balance attack. You want them having that box-to-box -box role. Very much like Ruiz, it does create and generate a very fluid midfield. You want your midfielders to pop up in those little spaces um, in and around the your own half, like getting on the ball and then progressing it forward, supplying the forward line with those accurate passes, crosses, um, and through balls as well. For the supports on crosses, both Fatina and Soleil have the same instructions, right? So you, it'll be a, an either-or system. At least I like to view it that way, with both of them being set to a balanced crossing run. So when the one does make that deeper run into the box, the other one will look to try and stay on the edge of the area, wait for the ball to either come back out or potentially look to try and rotate possession if need be. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on for them. They're going to be the workhorses trying to win that ball back nice and high field if need be as well. Cover the wing is essential. Of course, you aren't really playing with fullbacks, so you're two midfielders with two central midfielders they'll look to drift into those wider areas for the defensive side of things and just look to pick up those wider runners in certain moments and then as for the positioning freedom on the offensive side of things they also are going to look to try and help the wingers try and add another body another passing man in and around the the edge of the the, the field i would say or the the flanks they will look to try and you know link up play quite effectively with the wingers um, and as you can see of course there he's got the same set of instructions as well now, moving out to our wingers, both of them are set to the same set of instructions as well with uh, come back on defense, stay wide and get behind. It is essential. They will be patrolling up and down the right and the left flank. You need them to do so as well. You need them to have a lot of stamina as well as pace because one ball in behind into that wider section and you could be exploited. Both are set to aggressive interceptions as well as having a balanced approach for their crossing run. So yes, they will get into the box in certain moments or potentially hang it back, link up play quite well in and around the attacking third and then supply those balls into the attacking area. And as you can see, a four Dembele, he is set to the same set of instructions as well. And then moving centrally, we've got the likes of Superstar, Kylian Mbappe. He is set to drift wide and get in behind. Now you do want him being able to make those advancing runs in behind the opposition's back line. Um, and he's very good at doing so. But more importantly, the ability to drift wide, having him central and having him pick out those pockets of space, having him interchanging positions potentially, 
um, on the right or the left flank does help out quite uh, a lot. It does draw certain players out of positions as well for the opposition, opening up more space for your players to try and work into. Normal interceptions are set to be on. Of course, he doesn't really always work back or work that hard on the defensive side of things. And then stay forward. You, you want him to be the out there ball more times than not making those runs. Almost linking up with the likes of either Ramos or Kola Mwani and creating a front two system or a front four system, you could say. Of course, he is said to be a center forward, but more times than not, center forwards look to kind of drop off a bit. Whereas Mbappe is a center forward and he's looking to hang very high up the field waiting for the out there ball. And then finally, we have got the likes of Gonzalo Ramos. He is said to drift wide and have a mixed attack, of course. Vacating certain um, positions for the likes of Mbappe. You also want him to potentially run those um, wider channels as well, collecting those wider balls and then supplying the ball into the box. We do see that more times than not with um, the big strong forward. And then, of course, for his attacking runs, have him set to target man does help, of course, but then you don't really want target man running too wide. You want it to stay more central. So you also want to try and get him to be able to make those runs in behind more times than not as well. Um, aggressive interceptions, however, are said to be on for him and then having a basic defensive support. So sometimes looking just to drop off if Mbappe does stay very high, link up play quite effectively as well. Or other times he can look to stay nice and high up with the likes of Kylian Mbappe. Now, of course, if you do rotate the team and you bring in the likes of Ugarte, Hakimi, as well as Kolo Mwani, there are some slight tweaks and variations to make to those individual players to try and get the best out of them in the system. And you'll start off with the base of the midfield, Ugarte. He is here to cut passing lanes and then this time stay back while attacking as well as have aggressive interceptions. Of course, the aggressive interceptions are said to replicate his playing style, his personality in the game, of course. But more importantly, he is an out and out DM. He's going to need to shield the back line more times than not. And this could potentially give you a bit more protection of that back line. So if you are playing up against a better side, Probably go with Ugarte over the likes of Ruiz at the base of your midfield. And then, of course, he is set to stick to position. Not being the deep line playmaker, can obviously take the ball off the back line and then get it forward, but he won't be as efficient with it as what Ruiz is. And then, of course, cover the center. You don't really want him having a free fluid movement. Um, you want him just patrolling and shielding that back area. Then moving out wide to the likes of Hakraf, Akimi, of course, one of the best right backs, right wing backs in the world. He said to come back on defense, stay wide and get behind, just like the likes of Dembele. But this time, his interceptions will be set to aggressive. Of course, he does have a bit more of a defensive prowess to him, as well as his support on crosses. He will not look to get into the box. He'll look to just try and facilitate and whip in crosses from that wide right area. And then we've got the likes of Kolo Mwani instead of Gonzalo Ramos. Some slight tweaks and variations to it, of course. He is here to have a balance with, so can take up the central mantle or potentially drift wide and vacate space for the likes of Mbappe, who's playing just in behind him. We do see that more times than not, by the way. Getting in behind, though, this time is essential. You want the likes of Kolo Mwani with Mbappe pressing that back line, making sure that they are making those runs in behind them. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on for him, as well as having a basic defensive support. So yes, my people, that is my version of Luis Enrique's triple three one formation that he did use against Strasbourg. And like I said earlier, I'm pretty damn sure he tried to use this versus the likes of Newcastle United. Of course, this is one of the best ways to get four forwards involved in your builder play, in your gameplay as well. So let me know down below how you found it. And of course, until the next time, I'm out. Yeah.